Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to continue with our walkthrough of the 2017 Economics HSC, the short answer section. Okay, so here we are at question 22a. A large agricultural property in Australia is sold to a foreign investor. So let's try and simplify it here. So we've got an. So the question then asks us outline how this transaction can affect two components of Australia's balance of payments. So all we need to do is think about what are going to be the inflows, what are going to be the outflows. To money coming in. And when this Australian asset is sold, that represents a credit on the capital and financial account. That when that asset is sold, the, the purchase price of that transaction comes into Australia as a credit. So then we think about what are then the outflows associated with this transaction. So what will happen is that all the rewards from the assets are now going to leave Australia and go to the foreign owners. So for example, the profits will now go overseas. So this is how it will be recorded in the balance of payments. So again, this isn't a perfect answer. You can see I've just kind of given you an approach on how to answer these question and how to get those two marks. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we come to part B and part B is a relatively simple question in the scheme of HSC questions. So if I look at it here, we've got this idea of distinguish. So to separate between the terms direct investment, so I would make a note, and portfolio investment. And you can see here it's for two marks. So if we just separate, this is FDI and this is portfolio, this is the difference, then that should be putting us on the right track to be getting these marks. So FDI is greater than 10%. Uh, greater than 10% of the shares on offer, on ownership. Basically, it's like taking a controlling investment. A controlling investment in an asset. Now, because it's such a large investment, it tends to be pretty long-term and also stable. So long-term and stable. And also that because it is um, an investor coming in and trying to set something up, that there tends to be a transfer of technology from overseas or innovation and bring that locally uh, into the country that's being invested in. Okay, so that's FDI. Let's now set up portfolio. Okay, so portfolio, you're buying less, of the, less than 10% of the uh, shares on offer or taking less than 10% of the control. That it's a more short-term investment. You're looking to make that kind of a, a profit or a return in a much smaller period of time than with FDI. In some cases, it could be speculative that you're taking a chance as part of a number of investments. And the big idea here is that you are buying assets you're not managing or controlling. You're not really interested in having a say in how it's run. You just want to make a profit or a return in a relatively shorter period of time. So these are the kind of ideas that I would suggest including to try and get those two marks on offer. And remember, don't write in a table format. I'm just giving you ideas. Make sure full sentences, complete ideas to show the markers your knowledge. Okay, so here we are at 22 part C. And this is a really important question because six marks are on offer, which is really large for a short answer when you consider a whole essay is worth 20 marks. So if we think about this question, it says, discuss the costs and benefits for Australia of FDI. So that relationship might be a bit confusing, but if we're looking at the benefits, costs and benefits for Australia, what we're looking at is, so we're looking at FDI's impact on Australia. So in that way, we're kind of looking at FDI coming 
into Australia. That that's a very important distinction in terms of looking at this question. So if that's our perspective on this question, all we need to do is think about, well, what are some costs and what are some benefits uh, for Australia of FDI? Let's start with the benefits and then we'll go into the costs. Okay, if we think about the benefits, one major benefit is that FDI is going to help Australia bring in lots of investment, particularly that it can't fund itself. So think about this point. So remember that Australia wants to do lots of investment, but it doesn't have the domestic level of savings to fund all of that investment investment. So hence it needs money to come from overseas. Foreign direct investment, investment coming from overseas for long term big projects. Well, that's really going to help Australia fund some of that desired investment. And this is going to have a couple of benefits. That on one hand, this extra investment is going to allow Australia to improve some of its key infrastructure elements, uh, roads, rail, ports, all sorts of things like that. And that also by having greater investment, that this is going to help Australia to boost aggregate supply. So increase the productive capacity of the economy, increase national income, GDP, all those good things just from foreign direct investment. When companies come from overseas or investors come from overseas to set up operations here, they're bringing their know-how. So they're bringing their technology, their innovation in terms of processes and the way they do business. And that when they set up here, that that could benefit Australia by us being able to learn from them and then apply that to various different businesses and operations around our country. So this technology or innovation transfer is another big benefit of FDI into Australia. A final benefit of FDI is that it is a type of investment that is relatively stable. Foreign investors and foreign companies are coming here to set up for the long haul, to set up for a long period of time. So it's a type of investment that can be relied on. Now let's shift over to some potential costs. So with the capital inflows, that is the benefit that that's going to lead to NPY outflows because the investment is going to produce all sorts of things in terms of rewards. And those rewards are going to flow to overseas investors like rent, um, profits, dividends, and all of those sources of income will leave Australia and go to those foreign investor. So this could uh, have a negative impact in terms of the current account deficit. In terms of other costs that when a foreign investor or a foreign company comes in and buys an Australian asset, then we lose control of that asset. We don't get to have that majority say in how it's used or how it's run. And that could be a potential negative for our economy. So with that loss of control of domestic assets or companies, this is just my abbreviation for companies, is there could also come political issues, a political bash, 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 backlash against foreign investment, which could be a negative because as you can see, Australia really benefits from that level of foreign investment. So these are some benefits and costs that you could talk about in trying to maximize your marks in this question. Okay, so this has been question 22 of the 2017 ECHO HSC. Uh, please come back for more. We've got more to go through with this walkthrough. Subscribe so you don't miss a video. Thanks for watching.